Welcome to this video that was requested by a student in the class to go over the solution to exercise 912. We briefly touched on it in a lecture a couple weeks ago, but I was asked to put this video together, so here we go. Um, this is a, kind of a very interesting problem. Of course, it's important because it's starred. You know, those are the really good problems. And in this problem, you're assuming that a sequence is uh, all non-zero. And you do that so that when you do this division here, uh, Sn plus 1 over Sn, that's defined. You know you're not defining by 0. And then you're asked uh, things involving what happens when this limit exists. And the first problem is to say, hey, show that if the limit is less than 1, then the, the limit of Sn is actually 0. And if you actually look at the structure of this, it's, it should ring a bell. I'm going to show you something quickly on the screen here from a Wikipedia article on the ratio test from series. And so there, you know, you're interested in determining if a sequence uh, converges. Whoops, sorry, kind of like enlarged that a little too much. And so one of the things you'll notice right here, and so I think I'll just go ahead and um, make, highlight some of the stuff on the screen is, and I'll do it in purple. You're asked about the limits of uh, terms in the sequence. And you're told, hey, if the limit of this comparison of you know, just one term of the sequence to another, so again, the, the, the series that you're involving, that you're dealing with, here we go, is summing up the a in terms. And if you're doing that, and you have that this limit of this ratio right here is less than one, then the series converges absolutely. So that's basically saying that the terms in the series uh, go to zero sufficiently fast so that the sum is finite. And in this problem, you're not really saying anything about them going to zero sufficiently fast, although you, you end up doing that to show that the limit's zero. So what we have here is, okay, we want the limit of these terms to be zero. There's a, there's a big hint, the scratch work is all about the hint. The whole idea is to say, well, if L is less than one, then you should be able to find an A, some number A, that's between L and one. Otherwise, L is not strictly less than one. And then if that happens, you should be able to make, you know, uh, S sub n plus one in absolute value be less than A times the absolute value of Sn, you know, after, after some point in the sequence. This is what the hint's saying. And then what you're supposed to show is then effectively, this means that the terms Sn have to decrease from the S sub n term um, right here, at a sufficiently fast rate, effectively, that they go to uh, zero because this is like a geometric rate of decrease, or an exponential, <coughs> excuse me, rate of decrease. So, all right, let's look at this problem. It's all about the scratch work. Um, L is less than one, so you can choose some number between one and L. So you do that. And then you say, well, look, um, I, I can make eventually, you know, first any epsilon greater than zero that I might pick, I, I can take Sn plus 1 over Sn minus L all in, with all those absolute values less than epsilon. And if I could do that eventually, then that just means that the terms Sn plus 1 over Sn um, are less than L plus epsilon. And then just by multiplying the denominator over, you see that that means that the n plus 1th term is less than L plus epsilon uh, times the absolute value of Sn. So this, and this tells you what maybe you should choose your epsilon, what you should let epsilon be. If you restrict epsilon from above to be A minus L, which is greater than zero because A is greater than L, right? Which implies that A minus L is greater than zero. So if you restrict epsilon, you know, remember restricting epsilon above is okay. Um, then what this means when you add L to epsilon is that L plus epsilon is then less than a if you've chosen, if you let epsilon be less than uh, a minus l, right? So this would then imply that. And so then this inequality actually gets you, let me this up a little bit, with such a choice. Um, this will then lead you to this, uh, this relationship right here. So you say, okay, what do I do with that? Well, I choose a capital N such that the little n's greater equal to capital N satisfy that inequality. And then I just systematically go one term at a time. Say, so look, that means that Sn plus one is less than A times Sn, and all with those absolute values, right, with the capital N. But then Sn plus two is less than A times absolute value of Sn plus one, which is less than A times A times absolute value of Sn, because now I'm just putting this inequality in here to get over to here. 
And so we're getting towards this relationship where we say, hey, that means that if I go two terms beyond Sn, then I have A squared times Sn. And so you just do this recursively to actually see the relationship that's given in the hint. If I take n, uh, strictly little n, strictly greater than capital N, then n minus capital N, right? Like n plus two minus n gives me two. I'm just gonna have S sub n, uh, little n, is less than the A to the n minus capital N uh, power times this Sn term. It's just a recursive relationship. So then that means eventually, you know, this is the scratch work, so it's, you know, it kind of me not meant to be vague, but it's, it, we're not being so precise, you'd write this more carefully in a proof. Eventually, for some choice of capital N, you establish this relationship holds for all the little n's greater than or equal to capital N. So then you say, okay, well, what does that mean? Factor out a n, right? And then I just say, hey, this number right here is just small. And this number is gonna, it can only be less than one because in fact, it, it, it goes to zero because absolute value of a is less than one. This is coming from this theorem right here. So that's just some small number. And in fact, if I choose capital N sufficiently large, I can make this kind of as small as I want as well. But in fact, I actually, you know, you could also do something like the squeeze theorem, which I think is maybe what I'm hinting at here. Because we, we actually then say, well, this goes to zero. This is just a number. And so then you have that this is a sequence that goes to zero. And that means that Sn eventually is bounded by something that goes to zero. And this is absolute value. So then it also has to converge to zero. So, okay, it's kind of a, a mess on the screen, but that's the, the basic idea. And uh, yeah, there's, that, that's it. Like, then you have to put that into a proof, but kind of once you see this in the scratch work, in some sense, conceptually, the game's over, then you just have to write a clean proof. And I encourage you to try to do that. Put all of this together in a nice proof. And if you want me to look at it and, and give you feedback on how the proof is presented, more than happy to do that. So that's it. I wasn't asked to comment on part B, but just the part A of this problem. So I'll, I'll stop the video there. Thanks for listening. I hope you found it useful.